Hello, welcome to What's Really Happening. Albert Einstein once said, humanity is going to require a substantially new way of thinking if it is to survive. And today, I want to give you a new perspective on life, the universe, and a few other things so that you can begin to think today in that new way Einstein thought necessary. In my life as a journalist, I've found that one basic truth can be used as a foundation for a mountain of errors. And if we dig down deep enough into the mountain of errors and bring out that one basic truth to set it on top of the mountain of errors, the entire mountain of errors will crumble under the weight of of that one truth. And there is nothing more devastating to a structure of errors than the revelation of the one basic truth upon which the structure of errors was built because the shockwaves of the revelation of truth reverberate and continue to reverberate throughout the earth for generations to follow. Awakening people who had no idea they needed to be awakened to the truth. In 1955, an extraterrestrial communication delivered in English was quietly published in Chicago, Illinois. Entitled The Urantia Book, the extraterrestrial authors claimed to be a commission representing invisible beings who reside on Earth and additional alien types from other inhabited worlds in our universe. These beings were assembled and then commissioned by the universe government of all things for the purpose of the reduction of our confusion by the elimination of error. The authors claim that science, religion, and history are always harmonious in the light of expanded universal truth. And this is the fifth time in Earth's history that the universe has authorized a visitation meant to impact civilization on a planet-wide scale. There is instinctive in the heart of man a longing for help from above and beyond. And with the arrival of this extraterrestrial communication, the question of whether or not we are alone in the universe has been answered, as well as who we are and what are we supposed to be doing here, which is really much simpler than you think. The 197 papers cover a wide variety of subjects and supply the cosmic data to fill in the gaps in our evolutionary knowledge and restore lost information regarding previous extraterrestrial visitations. Today, scientists believe There is compelling evidence of these ancient visitations, which were described in detail in this extraterrestrial communication, designed to expand our cosmic consciousness and enhance our spiritual perspective. Although the communication describes at great length the nature, attributes, and domain of God, the authors are well below him in the chain of command, and they reveal only what they know and what they believe to be God's perfect will. They make no claim of infallibility in their attempt to lead the human race forward and say that peace on earth and goodwill to all men can never exist unless each human is willing to completely surrender to the fact that God is our Father and we are all
all brothers. Problems we now face in the 21st century could be solved if this information would be taken seriously by our world's political and religious leaders. And if this information is studied with an open mind, it might be evaluated as a potential quantum leap in man's continuing quest for greater knowledge, increased wisdom, and the peaceful coexistence of all humanity. If you never hear another word about this field manual we have been provided for living harmonious and sustainable lives here on earth, you need to hear what I tell you now. And I'm not telling you this because I think it's important, but these extraterrestrials state that which the world needs most to know. And of all human knowledge, that which is of greatest value. And what an awakening the world would experience if. And tonight, I want to expand your perception of what's really happening all around us. To do that, we will begin with the organization of the universe. Our world is one of many similar inhabited planets which make up the local universe of Nebadon. Nebadon, together with similar creations, makes up the super universe of Arvantan, one of the evolutionary super universes of time which circle the never-beginning, never-ending creation of divine perfection, the central universe of heaven. Heaven is of enormous dimensions and almost unbelievable mass and is not an evolutionary development. It is not a time creation, but an eternal existence. This eternal core consists of one billion spheres of unimagined beauty and superb grandeur. We will pass through each of these billion worlds in our eternal lives, and no two worlds are alike. Paradise is at the heart of heaven and is the geographical center of infinity and the actual dwelling place of the eternal God, our Father. Paradise is a gigantic nuclear isle of absolute stability and is the source and eternal focal point of all energy in the universe. This eternal capital is an organized body of cosmic reality and is motionless, ellipsoid, and essentially flat, with gravity originating on the back side. From paradise, the Father bestows his love by filling endless space with limitless potential for life. But the most important thing to remember about paradise is the fact that it is the destiny of all spirit-led mortals. On the outskirts of this vast central universe, there swirl an unbelievable number of enormous dark gravity bodies. These dark gravity bodies neither reflect nor absorb light, and so completely encircle and enshroud heaven as to hide it from the view of even nearby inhabited universes. These bodies so effectively equalize the gravity emanating from paradise, the central universe is a fist balanced and perfectly stabilized eternal creation. Our super universe, or Vantan, the seventh and youngest, has a diameter of approximately 500,000 light years and contains 10 trillion suns. Practically all of the starry realms visible to the naked eye belong to our super universe. 
The Milky Way starry system represents the central nucleus of Orontan, and gazing through this realm of maximum density, you're looking towards paradise. The seven super universes are subdivided into 100,000 local universes, like Nebadon, containing 10 million inhabitable planets each. All are carefully organized and managed, and our existence, far from being without a purpose, is not an accidental or random occurrence. In fact, there is operative on our planet a very definite and effective superhuman supervision of world affairs and human destinies. And our planet is just as lovingly administered as if it were the only inhabited world in all creation. So as you consider the staggering immensity of God's creation, do not fail to accept him as the beneficent father of all intelligent beings. There is but one God and father of all who is above all and in all. He is before all things and in him all things consist. Creator sons of God go in to his local universes to carry out the divine plan, the will of God. These sons are, are perfect reflections of the matchless character of their paradise father. These high creator sons are given authority to create and govern an area of space, but must earn their sovereignty by incarnating seven times in the likeness of the life forms within their local universe, each time incarnating in a more physical, less spiritual station in life. These local universes are further subdivided into constellations and then into smaller systems inhabited by mortals. Our physical universe address is Urantia. Of the solar system, Monmatia, planet 606 of the Satania system in the constellation of Nalashadek on the borderland of the local universe of Nebadon in the super universe of Arvantam. We presently have 619 inhabited worlds in our local system. Life is initiated on the planets by the life carriers who watch over the development until some time after the evolutionary appearance of mortal man. Our planet was assigned as a life experiment world as one planet in 10 is. On Earth, universe scientists made their 60th attempt to modify the Nebadon life designs. And it is of record as they achieved numerous beneficial modifications of the standard life patterns. For the establishment of life on no world is ever experimental in the sense that something untried and unknown is attempted. The evolution of life is progressive creation, but never haphazard, uncontrolled, nor wholly experimental in the accidental sense.